Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Michael Pascovicius, and I am delighted to be here with you today for OER 22. Uh, welcome to everyone, whether virtually or in person. How exciting. I am joining you asynchronously, but if everything has worked out, I should be in the Discord right now to take any questions, feedback, or comments as we go. Uh, and I certainly want to extend an invitation for you to participate in this research that's being done as part of my GoGN fellowship for the year 2022. Um, very happy to be uh, a fellow this year. I'm a graduate of the GoGN um, uh, program, and it really changed the process of my PhD, and I'm grateful uh, for all the support I've had in the network and uh, contacts I've made as a result. Um, so just to give you some context, I am joining you from the west coast of Canada. Um, we're on the traditional territories of the Lekwungen people, uh, as well as the Songhees, the Squamalt, and Wasanich people who have been um, stewards of this land since time immemorial. Um, so I'm very grateful to be here and to be uh, part of this community uh, and uh, do the work I do as, a, as an educator. I'm an early career educator. Um, I worked for many years as an educational developer, so I've worked with teachers for many years, but I'm now um, working as an assistant professor in educational technology. Uh, and in that role, I get to work with um, future and current teachers who are um, interested in thinking about technology and teaching and learning. So I'm very uh, happy to be um, doing that work. Working with teachers is always um, very exciting. They're very keen to learn and to the service their community. So uh, it's a great place to be. Now, you may have noticed that the title of this presentation is a little different from what I pitched in the OER 22 program. Uh, truth is, it's evolved. Um, part of the fellowship is um, a chance to engage in open research. And throughout the process of coming up with the proposal, um, sharing with uh, the GoGN community, getting feedback, um, in fact, this morning, I was in a session with my uh, fellow fellows, uh, Catherine and Vivian, and we had even more feedback coming to support each other's projects. So we're very much doing uh, an open design, and so things have shifted um, as we have gone. And I've kind of moved away from the idea of identifying digital literacies um, as initially sketched out in the OER 22 proposal to think more about foundations of uh, principles or values for open education that we might be able to share with early career educators or um, teachers in my context um, to get them engaged with, with open educational practices. I've been working with open education for some time um, working with faculty and supporting um, awareness and also contributions to open education. Uh, and in that, I've learned that there's more than um, the adoption of resources, of course. Um, there is pedagogical changes that can come from using open educational uh, content or um, processes. Um, and I do believe that this can have an impact on the way we teach and what we ask learners to do. So I'm really interested in this idea of how we can get at the practices associated with open education and build those in to early career teachers as sort of the way things are done um, in a way, hopefully, to enhance their pedagogy and the way they engage with their learners, whether it's in sourcing content or designing learning experiences or thinking about assessment um, in all those areas, I think open education has the potential to make change. So the goal of this project is to identify a framework for sort of the foundational values, principles, 
and maybe even some skills um, in relation to open educational practices. So I think the framework could be usefully described in terms of um, not just content, not just open educational resources, but also in terms of pedagogy and what can we do that's a little different now that we've got open access to resources or open systems and tools to share and create. Um, and that leads to uh, the technology as well that's available to us. Uh, in my, uh, again, in my uh, early proposal for OER 22, um, you know, part of the feedback was the tension in that you want to define a framework, uh, but this is such a kind of complex and uh, maybe even messy space, right? So it's multifaceted, it's uh, highly contextual, and would a framework really help? Um, and that's why I've kind of moved into um, the idea of um, values and principles for open education. And I, this may shift even further as we go and with your feedback today, I hope it might too. Uh, so I, as I said, I work with teacher candidates. Uh, what a great place to be. They're super keen, they're eager, they know what they wanna do. They are um, committed to being teachers uh, when they enter a program such as the one I get to meet them in. Um, and they are great candidates for um, engaging with open education. It's, uh, we have this formal training program where they become teachers and certified eventually. Um, so we're trying to embed uh, open educational practices in our program. And right now it happens in a teacher or rather a, a technology integration course. There's a lot in that course. It's not only about open. There's also things about data privacy and how we, um, how we select tools for use with students that are pedagogically sound. Um, and so we don't have a lot of space to work on open educational practices, although I try to model them um, as a teacher myself um, in the program. But many researchers have identified the space of K-12 as one where we could make um, some more inroads with open education and open educational practices. And so this project is largely about that context, although you can think about it in terms of faculty development or other areas where we're trying to get educators thinking about engaging more openly. So one of the models that um, we often use to talk about technology integration is the TPAC model. Um, teachers seem to like this model uh, because for some of them, uh, especially if they're uh, post degree, so they've done a four year degree, and they're coming to be teachers, they have a really kind of good sense of the content that they are probably going to be teaching. Um, so a little bit more confidence there. Uh, pedagogy's all new within the program. So learning how to teach, how to engage, how to assess. Um, they've got those skills as well that they're picking up along the way. And then there's the technological skills. Um, and so the TPEG model kind of identifies those and identifies the crossover uh, in terms of how these interact and how to make choices uh, around how to use technology that makes sense for the content you're trying to teach and um, is well positioned pedagogically to lead to meaningful learning. I've done a little bit of kind of just getting a sense of where my students are at in terms of their confidence in these areas. This is a um, post-degree group, very small group, so that should be noted, 26 individuals, um, but they were asked to just rate their confidence in terms of the content uh, that they're going to be teaching, uh, the pedagogy and how they can teach um, in a meaningful way, and then the um, technical knowledge. So you can see um, content um, there's more folks who are feeling a little bit more confident, more people up on that higher end of the scale. Uh, in terms of pedagogy, it was quite a wide um, split in terms of feeling confident about their actual pedagogical approaches. And then technological knowledge as well, kind of similar to content um, emerging uh, and some feelings of strength there as well, which is great. 
I've got to do larger scale studies on this to see um, how groups uh, may differ over time. And certainly if you looked at a group that was doing a four year um, education program, they may have less in, in the area of content knowledge having not done a four year degree. And I've also done a little research on just getting a sense of what our learners know about open education. Um, so we've asked them about a couple um, areas or um, uh, concepts in the space of open education to see what their awareness was. Now this is again a small study uh, but um, gives a sense of some of the gaps uh, in terms of knowing about open textbooks or open educational resources uh, which they seem to have a little bit more um, awareness of. Uh, all these words make sense I think for many but um, they may not know some of the practices associated with how do you actually use these or what does it mean in terms of how it can change your pedagogical approach. So there's work to be done, but um, I also find that in a teacher education program, um, folks are really typically overwhelmed learning about how to teach, how to assess, how to engage with parents and community. Uh, so it can be a little bit overwhelming to in, in as well um, introduce the whole space of open education, but I still think it's really important. So I'm looking at some ways maybe to, to connect to principles of teacher education, like in, in around access and equity and um, social justice. Um, those are all built into our teacher education programs, but how can you perhaps enact some of those um, through open education? So there's been many models proposed that seek to articulate open educational practices for teachers. Um, this is not a comprehensive list as there's been many uh, beyond what I have here. These are perhaps the ones I have uh, the most experience with. And I hope to use these um, as a guide as part of the literature review, but also see what um, we can tease out from the community uh, in addition to these, or perhaps building on or extending these, um, specifically in the area of uh, early career or future teachers, um, and trying to identify some of the foundational um, values and principles that could help them start engaging with open education uh, and building it into their practice. And so this is where I invite you to participate in a short survey um, to gather feedback on what you think could be part of this framework. I have recently um, completed an ethical review for the collection of data uh, from the open education community and uh, I'd really be interested in hearing from you, whether you work in teacher education or have experience um, engaging with open educational practice yourself or supporting faculty in their uh, engagement with open educational practice. I would um, really like to hear from you, you around what could be helpful for, um, for new and emerging educators to get into this space. The survey shouldn't take you more than three to five minutes. Um, so I hope you'll take the opportunity. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is donating five Canadian dollars for every survey completed up to $1,000 um, to uh, aid relief in Ukraine as part of uh, the data collection process. So I hope that provides some incentive to engage uh, and I'd really appreciate if you would. Um, you can access the survey at this link. It will be on line for um, at least the next um, two months, uh, but I encourage you to not wait. <laughs> and um, I hope this presentation has given you something to think about in terms of what you could contribute. Um, and remember, the goal is to um, build on the work that's been done already, but also see what we can come up with in, if we can crowdsource a model around the foundations for open educational practice. So I really hope you'll participate. I'll close there. 
uh, and I will be in the Discord. You can contact me um, as well if you wish. Um, I've got references, which I'll provide um, via tweet of the slide deck. And if you need to contact me, you can reach me in a variety of ways. I thank you for your time and I wish you a wonderful conference oh, um, and I wish you well. Take care. Thanks.